Pam and Tommy, episode 3, titled Jane Fonda, and this episode I found was a really weird episode to talk about because in the first episode you were focusing on Wen, you know, Seth Rogen's character who was the guy who broke into the house of Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson, who stole their safe, and who, what was in the safe? A sex tape between the two people that he stole, he broke into and stole the safe with. And he thought of releasing that sex tape, sex tape beyond the world. And it was all about giving us the reason why, right? The concept. Why would you want to do something like that? Was it just money? Was it a kind of event? And we found out it was a, a, a period motive. Episode 2 was focusing on the title of characters. It was about Pam and Tommy. And why these two big out of this world... Out of a full of life people fell in love and got married in a span of four days and in this episode it's kind of merging the two and what you find is because Tommy and Pam are so out there in this show that anytime we go to Seth Rogen's character he just it just becomes a bit not dull but just like you know what he's uh, can we go b back to the fun people? Can we go back to the fun people? It's like, oddly enough, it's, they... I think what it is, it's the whole thing, like, we know the events that are going to occur, and we want to have fun with these two people as much as we want before everything goes completely shitfire. Before the tape gets released. And we know this is the guy who's going to make everything worse for these two people. And... I think the, that's why I, out for the entire episode, I was like, okay, yes, I get it. You know, people, probably porn video uh, distribution people, maybe didn't want, even though if they wanted to, they probably didn't want to release the sex tape knowing that it might eagle the lawsuit that would burn this place to the ground. So you try to find ways of why the internet, why the internet, why the internet. And I'm like, do we though? There's a part of me that kind of felt like, I think it would be interesting if we're like, hey, we know what happened. The sex tape gets released, and then the and then Pam and Tommy find out, and then the rest of, rest of the show happened. Because any, because I was like, not bored, but just like, eh, just a little bit uninterested. Because they, once again, every time we're with Tommy and Pam, it kind of gets aggravated. The performances of Abbasis Stanley and Lee James of these two people are absolutely aggravated. And like even the stuff, like this is a tween, this is basically the Pamela episode because this is the Baywatch episode. This is the one that's um, hinting like barbed wire and all those type of projects that she did in the, in the mid-90s. But with the Baywatch stuff, every time we were with the showrunner, I assume, and the directors, or the writer, whoever those guys were, I was like, can I, where's a sandwich and where I can throw three of them? Like, one per person. Like, seriously, where's the sandwich? Where's the surfboards that I can whack them with? Because I, like, clearly what they're doing is, is showing that, hey, in Baywatch, Pamela felt not that earned, that she felt she had this ability, that she could bring all that she could, and Baywatch wasn't doing that because all they saw her as in the context of the show was eye candy. That she said a line or two, and but she is just to go in slow motion in the bathing suit and be hot and sexy in the, in the context of, of the show. And... I, I mean, the part that really got to me, I was like, you're kidding me. Are we really going to spend five, are you really going to spend like five minutes of, you know, of moving her cloth, her butt, you know, the cloth and saying, mm, show, show the more steam, please. Uh, move it to the left. What? A little bit to the crack. No, no, it's not a crack. I'm like, are you just doing that? So you can look at her ass for five minutes, you f three middle ends perps. Middle age perps. And the answer is probably yes. 
because probably what they're trying to do is show that hey the more attractive you are in Hollywood and definitely if you're a woman is the the more attractive you are the less Hollywood wants to listen to you and of course we all know that's bullshit and the moment we have that scene nearly at the end where we're seeing barbed wire posters which I just saw it's not a good movie by the way just want to put it out there it's known as like one of the worst combat movies if you want to know what barbed wire is about it's about uh she is a superhero uh, she is like a, a crime fire batman type character by night but a swiper during the day um by the way, there's a there's also Swipper Weller, which is essentially the same goddamn concept. The only thing it's Adam Man and Stan Lee had some of all men with it. Um, but <laughs> I haven't seen that. I hear that's also not good. Anyway, oh, even it's good if you want some shits and giggles. That's what it is. Anyway, and she's talking about how she's a spy by Jane Fonda, and how she wants people to be like. Yes, I'm. Yes, you may. You might find me attractive, and yes, I was the dumb blonde in Baywatch, and maybe you know. I want to be the action hero. I want to do the Oscar wing stuff, and you know, look at Jane Fonda. Look at all the shit she did, and she did. And basically, said to the audience, "If you have a problem with that, fuck you." Yeah, and freedom. It's you feel like it's that whole thing right like it's the this is all the stuff that's happening going through their career or definitely towards Pamela's career and because at this point Tommy in the show is just staying away in the house he's just sitting in the house watching TV um so it's nothing really much to do I guess um if you're a rock star waiting for your next tour but you know for Pamela's case it's you know she's having her career was going upwards there was a sense of hope you know she's about to have a kid her, she's about to be a, a, a new uh, a first time mom and all that, all that kind of stuff and then the then the tape comes out and there's a sense of empathy uh, a sense of oh no we all know what's going to happen. It's kind of like when, to give people a, a reference, it's kind of like seeing Hawkeye's family at the beginning of Endgame because we all knew what was going to happen. They were going to be dusted. Um, and that's what it kind of did. And it's a pretty well done episode. It's just all the stuff that with Seth Rogen's character, it's just a little bit like, okay, I think it was better if you just like show us like, them that they at least tape and and we'll see them whenever you know you know the investigation comes along or where whatever would happen but yeah it's a i it's a really well done episode and that and by the way the barbed wire meeting and her talking about jane fonda um and how it's in it's in the trailer how like she's always trying to impress people she's always trying to be the perfect little angel who you know doesn't you know make conflict she um that's really done that's out of the three episodes that's probably the best acting uh from lee james as pamela Anderson. so yeah i mean this is a well done episode i'm going to cut things covering the show we only got six five episodes left and um yeah because next week will be the halfway point which is always like weird that we're at the halfway point and we're on week two but uh, uh collection eight but yeah, this is a well done episode, and a show I think people should check out and watch. I know there's a little bit of, I say pushback, not controversy, but pushback for this show. But uh, I think just entertainment alone and the storytelling alone, I think it's, so far it's pretty well put together.